The following audio may contain content inappropriate for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm Jack Newman. I'm Ben Howard. And I'm Peter Dancy. And this is Save Point Gamecast. How are you guys doing this week? I'm doing pretty Whoa. good. Just trying to get everything done for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It's nice. We're back. We actually just took a long uh, save point hiatus, um, mostly because we're inundated with Christmas shit. But it's that kind of year. I feel like the listeners will forgive us, yes. especially as many games as we had to play. We're all just crawling out of 2016 as slow as we can. <laughs> oh, we look like space, we look like the fucking dude that had his head explode after like what was it? Um, eraser head. Oh, and scanners. Mm. Scanners, God, that reference is terrible. See, I have no That's brain. Right. It does not function. <laughs> which is like, which we'll get to um, having no bodily function. Ah, this is this transition is terrible. All right, <laughs> what we played, God help us. We're out of practice. We're going to get into it. I know me and Peter are going to gush about Final Fantasy XV because that's where we're both playing. Oh. But first up, Ben, you wanted to talk about Doom. And, more in, and uh, if that uh, transition had worked well, um, <laughs> more importantly, I have no mouth, but I must scream. I have no mouth, but I must scream. Uh, Which is I was just going the to say most metal Doom. video game name ever, I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> no, no I, 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 I'm glad you'd heard of it because I was like, Jack's going to be like, Ben, that's the most pretentious game you've ever played no 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 it's a <laughs> it's uh what's his face it's yeah it's a harlan Ellison, science uh, fiction but i'll get to i'll get to that soon so i'll just yeah, quickly yeah, yeah, say yeah, uh, i finished doom and unfortunately just second half just wasn't as good for me as the first it was still fun yep. but weirdly it got like more serious with the plot which was weird and i didn't like that weird. they were on like a cliffhanger which was really weird as well uh because like the whole game was like fuck video game narratives but then it wanted to have like a video game narrative at the end it felt like so i feel like that was a weird choice at the end can i uh, can i ask you a question ben one of the questions i had is that like honestly the way doom was set up i would have been okay with that game having like ridiculous quick time events at the end and i probably if i if if it had been that way i probably would have complained about it but i really wanted that game to like to like get crazier as it it got to like like once you once I fought the cyber demon and that was great because like you fight yeah. this super hard cyber demon, he dies and then literally comes right back with more with the same health and you're like, fuck! <laughs> and you're like, fuck! <laughs> it's so mean. It's so mean and so awesome and perfect. But uh, it, the game kind of peaked at that point and the rest was just like uh, just all the same enemies. And honestly, I, it, at a certain point, I should just raise the difficulty up because um, I don't know. I was, just, I was playing on medium, which is usually hard enough for me, but. Uh, I don't know, once yeah. you get all the guns, it gets a lot a lot easier because you have a lot yeah. of options. So, well, I, li- I like I the melees. I like, I like the games like melee. Like uh, That was the point is like when, it, when you start spieling like a badass, I wanted, I wanted the game to recognize the fact that like you had crossed some threshold of like, you know, comfortability Ultra with badass. the game as well as like you hit this moment where you're just like, there's nothing that is going to stop me. <laughs> this is true. This is true. And yeah, I guess it like hit like 80% and never got to 100 so I can feel you there. Yeah. But yes, the yeah. other game I've been playing is I Have No Mouth But I Must Scream. Uh, I had never heard of this game before. I had heard of the, the short story before, um, which is a short story by Harlan Ellison, uh, one of the great sci-fi writers. Uh, and I was on a Reddit thread, and it was, uh, what's the most depressing short story <laughs> that you've ever read? Yep. Um, and someone, of course, mentioned I Have No Mouth But I Must Scream, which is a story written by Harlan Ellison about the future where all of mankind has been wiped out except for five people who are being tortured and kept alive forever by a cruel, sadistic AI that wants to torture humans because he's bad. And oh, evil. that's dark. It's really fucking depressing, yeah. and he like messes with all their minds and changes their identities all the time, and it's, it's really dark and really depressing. Uh, and he was right. It was a very depressing thing. And then someone said, yeah, I couldn't even finish the game. And I'm like, What? <laughs> There's a video game about this fucking horribly bummer of a short story. And there is, because the 90s CD-ROM era was fascinating. And yeah. I find that era very, very fascinating, and I kind of want to find more games of that era so people know other like cool gems like this from that era. I would love to hear them. But uh, guess games are interesting because it is a point-and-click game, but it's about dark shit. Um <laughs> You get to pick five of the main people and deal with like their emotional turmoil. Like I, the first person I picked uh, was a woman, 
and like the entire time she's like afraid of the color yellow and you're like why does she care about yellow so much and then you find out like she was raped by someone wearing yellow and it's like whoa <laughs> this is in a video game you know uh yeah. and and that's the thing i find very fascinating about it i don't know if it's I will say I don't think the voice acting really works. I think it was ambitious to voice acting at the time, but it's a little bit spookier and a little bit better if you just put on text. So I would recommend if anyone wants to check this out. I got it for a dollar fifty on Steam at the time, six dollars normally. Um, it's ambitious. I mean, it's a very interesting game. It's not like maybe the best point and click game, but it's like making a depressing, interesting, <laughs> introspective point-and-click adventure game <laughs> it's not what i was Jesus, expecting that dude. existed out there somewhere because point-and-click so often is associated with silliness to me at least maybe because of the sierra games and the lucas arts games but uh to do them they had like sort of a very very dark storyline way darker than even uh the telltale like uh uh walking dead sort of storylines is yeah. deeply fascinating so i don't know if i love it but Which at least is- i very much find it interesting yeah, which is one of the issues with these kind of things is, like, I really, I do wish games would go that dark again. Because if I'm not mistaken, it's even toned down from the book, which was honestly... Yeah, you have um, the possibility of even beating the AI, I think, in one form or another, you know what I mean? And conquering these people's fears. Like, it takes the sort of the... It, it still has goals yeah. and achievements, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. No, and I yeah. think the like the best ending is the actual titular I have no mouth but I must scream ending where you manage to get everyone else killed. What? And that's the thing is like death is the best option for the like characters. Right. And right. then the like, rainy person like, turns into a uh, <laughs> a faceless blob. <laughs> yeah. That's who cannot express his it's, it's just horrifying and then you know you go into the book and like they talk about how like you know the am the computer had like altered them like ellen who he made like you know who she was he made desperate for sexual intercourse and benny who yeah. was a brilliant handsome scientist who he made into this like simian character with a giant sexual organ who was gay and then the the computer turns him straight and then they regularly have sex with ellen like it's really really yeah, fucked up I it's wish really listeners crazy. could see my face because I'm just sitting here just like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, like like what? gay conversion therapy is part of this book, except it's done by an evil supercomputer that makes him have like a giant penis. And then she's yeah, like it's... tortured by the fact his penis is so... It's 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 literally He's like... made into like it's a human satyr. Like, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's awful. It's well, I mean, like that's like the closest comparison that I can come up with in my mind. So it's like... Oh. Yeah, it's... It's very depressing, and then the fact that Harlan Ellison like had creative control over the game is kind of crazy. That it was made, and that Harlan Ellison is like part of it, and I believe he even voices the computer in the game, which you know is one part to say that you should turn on the voice acting. I just think it's well, takes away. To be overall. honest, anyone but, that comes uh, up with this book, you don't want to piss off. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Like, Harlan Ellison was like, notorious. Anyone an that asshole. is like uh, he he fought with Rod Sterling a lot for a lot of the. No, I'm sorry, but um, oh, the guy who created Star Trek. I'm so sorry. Gene Roddenberry. Because he, Gene Roddenberry, he wrote one yeah. of the most famous uh, episodes. And he fought with Gene Roddenberry like crazy because he fucking butchered his episode. <laughs> Which probably ended way more depressingly even than that episode did. More than yeah. likely. Well, I, I feel Nelson's like Gene Roddenberry and him are like opposite ends of the science fiction. Like, on an, 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 oh, totally. You know, like, he's like, he's like, you know, look, he, 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 like the difference is, is like Gene Roddenberry wants to see the best in people looking forward towards the future. And there's something great about Star Trek. And that is Gene Roddenberry. Like Star Trek is that like Harlan yeah. Ellison is like, let's put a like, like a mirror, like use science fiction to put like to show different situations that put a mirror up to humanity so that we can look at our own soul, right. which is, which is, totally. <laughs> Which is like, there's no hope in, in like a lot of the context of realizing certain things. But again, Absolutely. it's just and so to, yeah. to play a game that 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 traffics in that same dark territory, even if it's not as dark as the book, is deeply interesting. And I would be more interested to see what authors would do with their games. You know, like yeah, Beat Takeshi's game is you know sort of a famous one. Takeshi's challenge, you know, is a another interesting idea of an auteur making a game where that one's literally unplayable and bizarre torturous in a very fascinating way uh so i don't know i guess i'm just curious to see if there's more auteur things out there where it's like are people jumping ships you know authors making games or directors yeah. making games you know i think that's there's some interesting perspectives that can be there even if they don't make necessarily the best games this one is particularly famous i mean because it, it makes all the best like what's the most horrifying game ever made like this is you can imagine usually, yeah yeah usually this is the top of the list 
Uh, moving on, that we have. Uh, I know that Peter and me both played this. I have finally, uh, pretty much finished Final Fantasy fifteen. Wait, what? Yeah. I so I went ahead. Time. I went ahead and decided that I couldn't fuck around with the side questing anymore, and uh. I tried to speed through to the end. Now I'm not gonna lie. I've kind of skipped a lot of stuff, and like I feel like I'm a little bit under leveled and all this other stuff. Uh, so I, uh-huh. I'm having a little bit of trouble at the end, but I've gotten the majority of the way through the story. That's that's kind of funny to hear because at least because at least for me, I haven't even gotten past chapter three because I'm just like side quest, side quest, side quest, side quest. Oh, dude, you let's can just hunts, let's do it's hunts, not let's do this, let's run around and just fight stuff. It's like I, yeah. that's what I've been doing for many many hours. So yeah. You, I mean, that's the thing. It's either like a thousand hour game or like a fifty hour game. Right. Like I get people speeding through to the end. Like you can do it. Totally. Like it, it's, it's interesting that the stuff isn't necessary, but like the world is so beloved. I have to admit, first thing first. You know, people are going to make fun of the characters out of context. I understand that. They are probably, to my mind, one of the better Final Fantasy casts of characters. I'm definitely enjoying them. Yeah. I heard like that. and especially. Yeah, I, I, I've Go heard ahead. that they're actually one of the few times you actually care about the characters. Oh yeah, and like, and like not Noctis. I don't. I don't give a shit about Noctis. Uh, but Noctis is like the Mary Sue of this game. Like uh, he is. I mean, but he's he's the core <laughs> element. He's the character stand-in that you're supposed to inherit uh, and like. Yeah, inhabit, those, are very, just, like, yeah, those because, are very because tough. Yeah, because well, especially since he's, he's so fucking he's so fucking emo. Uh, like yeah, you're just like, like fuck the fuck up. You're a prince. Because <laughs> him by himself, he's just so boring. He's just like, uh, whatever. The sun is shining. Uh, the sun is like, uh, it's raining. Uh, yeah. I'm tired. It's like, 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 honestly, whenever I'm running around, like, like the like the most interesting little tidbits that like, like, or like, or like, like little snippets of conversation that are exchanged. It's when it's when it's the other three. Yeah. So. Here is my big criticism of the game, and I don't mean to spoil, and I'm not going to spoil anything because you're you're not into the story yet. Yeah, um, yeah. But my biggest criticism, and I think that a lot of people, this is echoed. This is not a new criticism. Near the end of the game, you lose your side characters. You don't lose them, but it goes on an extended section where you're going down corridors and you're just Noctis, and it's for the purposes of the story. And I understand the purpose. Hmm. But damn if it doesn't lose a lot of the fun. Like, this game is fun when you are doing exactly what you're doing, mm-hmm. Peter. And I think that's the thing, is I think people have had very different experiences. I'm very interested to see what do you get, like, out of, like, a thousand-hour experience of driving around. Uh-huh. Like, you know, if you get all the way, push all the way to the end, it's fun. But right. at the same time, there is a some point where the story kind of, like, has to take over. And that will force you into kind of, you know, corridors in certain situations that I have not found to be anywhere near as fun as the open world. Right. So that, and that, and that's also kind of just for this the other thing is too is that like your party characters are so important to the battle system and and honestly they end up giving you a lot of the flexibility that makes the combat interesting on a bigger scale when it's just Noctis it's kind of just press X. Very much. Very much. Yeah. Yeah, like that, like that that is something I've realized like like whenever I don't Whenever I don't, you like I, I do I do stuff in fighting that that, that like that purposefully involves that, that purposely involved like, involves the rest of my party. I am just like I'm just sitting there just holding X and Noctis mm-hmm. will just be knocking away at what at, at whatever I have him locked on to, and it's like yeah. it, it, it's 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 a little stale when you when you when you, when you do that so to i think sort of know that and, and that's the thing, thing like uh, is when you power through and like use the party characters and use magic and use the summons and use the systems like and you have a tougher enemy um it really works and i think that's the thing my biggest criticism may be that there's no kind of like there's there's not really a like super challenging bosses in this to my mind, yeah, not yeah. I, I, I at, at least from at least from what I have encountered, just 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 ru- just running around and like and, and encountering yeah. different beasts in the open world, or like or 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 in the dungeons that that I that I have either explored myself or I have talked with friends here about, like like some like some of the challenging stuff comes in dungeons because 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 I was talking right. to a friend just earlier t- just just earlier today and he and he was like yeah I found I found a dungeon near Hammerhead. The lowest, the the, the low, like, and, and he was like, and with the level that I'm at, that with the level that I'm at right now, the lowest level, like, like, like enemy in this dungeon is a level thirty-seven flan, and everything past yeah. that is just like bumped up. I'm like, oh, okay, 
that's a challenge. Yeah. I'm going to find this dungeon so I can like, yeah. challenge myself. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not saying that. There is challenges in it. My, right. my big it's thing is that the there was never a moment where it was like, I felt like the game had gotten to a point where I had to get clever about, like, say, using Noctis to kite enemies to do things. Yeah. Like, like I, I mean, I'm saying, like, you know, okay. the, one of the things I like about Final Fantasy X is that it actually has a very, like, it has a very, like, a lot of these, you know, back when it was role-playing games, X and before, they tended to have very, very deep systems, and the switch over into real-time fantasy hasn't really progressed them into having, like, these deep systems where you have to make use of haste and the magic, you really have to make use of the system to succeed at the game. Okay. So my point is, I feel sometimes like there is a good battle system there, but the game doesn't necessarily push you to full to fill out all the functionality of it. I see. Because okay. you can always, there's always too much, and I think that's also maybe just because of the it's more being open world. Like there was always so much more to do in the open world, so I I never felt under leveled. So maybe that's my bad too. I, it's hard for me to say. Um, yeah. I, I, damn, I'm, if there's I'm not realizing. a lot of like ability to build up experience points, though. Oh yeah, I got, I'm I'm realizing that too. Like I, I, when I when I look when I look at this stuff that I have lined up like as side quests, but then but then I look but then I look at like at, at like what it, what is what will be like the main story quest. And it's like suggested level, and I see and I see like what they suggest, and it's like I'm way over that already. I'm like yeah. I'm yeah way past that. This like this will be a challenge, but not really. It's like if you if you if it's very easy to both under and over level things yeah. is what I find right because the area it expects you to tackle these areas and it, it kind of expects you not to delve into everything mm -hmm. but you can delve into enough to get to that point like it didn't want you to tackle everything it wanted you to kind of give and take like if you never wanted to go fishing which you're an idiot if you never want to go fishing because that, that fucking song is hilarious that song is so um, intense just for catching like trout. <laughs> I know, and it's it's like really you feel insane. like you're like fucking navigating the bounds of humanity right. or something like like no, I don't know like, like it sounds like final boss music. That's what's crazy to me. It no, it like, sounds like the music you yeah. play when you touch the face of God. <laughs> like <laughs> it's not catching so fish. Intense. Yeah, it, it's, 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 a, it's a it's a little so intense. intense. Uh, like yeah, when I, when I buy when I buy the soundtrack, by the way, if someone like really loves me, just get the soundtrack for me. Um, but like. <laughs> I, I, I want. I'm gonna want it when it comes out. But yeah, like when like when when you're just fishing, just fishing, it gets really intense. And you're like, it, 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 it's it's almost like you're having like like an actual fight just in the world. Like 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 fighting like getting a fish. You're fighting the fish to catch it. Here we'll call it the "I have no mouth, but I must scream" test. Would this music be at home in that game? Probably shouldn't you be used <laughs> for a fishing mini game then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I'm just. I'm just saying. <laughs> are we an evil Nazi with the backstory, or are we like weird Japanese-looking dudes fishing? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, My your hair is so pointy. To escape on Andy torment. <laughs> <laughs> Or did somebody just have a cooking mini game? We don't know. <laughs> speaking of cooking, speaking of cooking in this game, I oh, yeah. I I need like several people playing this game who are really good at cooking to take every dish that Ignis <laughs> cooks and like figure out how to make it in the real world because every single dish it's like it's it's like looking at food that, that that's that's in a Miyazaki movie. I want to eat it. Oh god. Anime food looks oh, so good. Oh, yep, it already exists. I just googled. Yes. I, I was like, I was like, as soon as you said it, I was like, I was sure that existed. Oh man, yep, it's literally, it's literally done in the form of. Like, <laughs> oh my god, this is great. You need to send that to me because I need it in my life. I got it right I, here. I, I, I will, I, I will use this game as, as motivation to like actually learn how to cook. It was like nice. me and Chokugeki. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, not to mention that, like, trying to cook fake roast pork is a mistake sometimes, dudes. All right. I think that's enough for Final Fantasy XV. I bet you guys are probably sick of hearing it in the last couple of news cycles, but thanks for bearing with us. Yeah. We're just going to be, we're going to keep talking about it. I think we're going to evolve our points. I still have a lot I want to talk about, I know, with you, Peter. Uh, yeah. So we'll see when we get back to it. And I know all of but, my points as I progress through the story as well, so we'll get there. Do you hear something? Do you hear something? I hear it coming. 
It's time for your news week. Oh man, I'm blowing out my microphone. Sorry, it's a new mic. I'm trying. I'm learning its levels. Sorry. We'll get there. But news. <laughs> so, uh, you should have heard the news. drunken MPG cast. I blew out every goddamn mic. <laughs> I love you oh so goodness. much. <laughs> we were on the road back from uh, like Virginia, me and Katie, and we listened to that, and we had so much fun listening to you guys. <laughs> I won't lie, I, I felt I felt bad because I was like gonna get on the cast and I was gonna tease you guys brutally about it, and then Bobby was like so mad. <laughs> I feel really really bad about it. Yeah, that. Was, that's crazy. <laughs> I went full dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna. We're not getting into demographic. Nope. Nope. I'm. Yep. Shutting up. Okay, news, news, news. Game Awards this week. What did you guys think? Do you any? Do either of you get a chance to see him? Unfortunately, I didn't. Watch one no, time, I didn't. But but, but I, did, yeah. I did look up the winners. Like I, I, once it was over, so you know. Yeah. I still got it's funny to me because last year I really, really wanted the Game Awards to be a thing, and then they totally passed me by this year. Which is funny. Yeah, because I heard about them, and then I, uh, and there was like, and then yeah, I just lost track of what was happening. Do you guys remember when we were in college and we had that uh, Spike video game award party? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> I do. Oh, my goodness. I remember, I remember that, and we had, like, a fight over who was going to win, and it turned out to be, like, Batman. Right. Um, was it Batman or was it... I think it was Batman, right? It was, back in, it was Batman certain, Arkham City. Yeah, I'm fairly certain it was Arkham City. I remember I was upset about that. I think so. All right. <laughs> so first news story of the night is that uh, at the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley put Konami on blast by saying they had been assholes to Kojima. Yep. Um, this is kind of something that has kind of been generally known that uh, they've kind of been doing some sort of like typical Japanese, not typical, I'm not saying all Japanese companies do this, but it is definitely a cultural effect of Japanese culture and businesses where they put um, people out to pasture in a little bit, but keep them on, on the payroll and kind of put them at jobs that isn't uh, good for them. And they've kind of been keeping Kojima from accepting awards and not allowing him to go accept certain awards for things. And especially with the odd things that, that happened at the end of Metal Gear Solid, where he won so many awards for the game, but Konami wouldn't allow him to accept uh, the awards for his labor, which people saw as a really big... Is a really big insult to Kojima and kind of a really dick move on Konami's part. Well, Jeff Keighley saw that and said as much last year, and this year went even further by putting Konami on blast again. What do you guys think about this? People will not let this go. <laughs> Konami, uh, Konami, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain, Konami. Like, yeah, uh, they literally yeah. became Talk Harvey about Dent. one of the great... Yeah, it's true. Like they they are the M Night Shyamalan of games now because like oh. I can't think of a game company that like is like their name is so tarnished. You know what I mean? I think of how tarnished that name M Night Shyamalan is. You yeah. know, yeah. For, for for Peter and a you, lot of other people and uh, me included. Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's one of those names and you're just like oh. No. Uh-oh. And uh, Konami's right. DMs now, too, where people hear it and they just think, pachinko machines, you know, ruining their <laughs> lives. And I think especially coming out, like, the worst idea possible, which was, like, you know, here's Metal Gear, but it's a zombie game. And you're like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> that game, it, that there is no hope for that game. I, just in terms no of the critical way. press. <laughs> I, like, there is no hope for yeah. it. And even if, it, even if it's not, like, the worst thing ever oh, it's probably man. worse honestly for it. like the se- like the second that like I, they, they, they announced that at, e- at, e- at e3 this year right yeah yeah they yeah. did yeah, yeah and yeah. it was it was one of the best meme fests i've seen in quite a while yeah, to be entirely yeah because 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 i remember watching i remember watching that press conference where, where, they, where they announced that game and like the second it was like it became apparent it's like this is zombies this is metal gear solid zombies my mind just immediately checked out like i i literally yeah. got up and yeah. went to the bathroom i was like i don't care it's one of the laziest ways to like reinvigorate a franchise i think we all like feel that way as yeah, people if, yeah. it's if, like if, one if of you the want, easiest ways to be zombie, like if, like if you want to do zombies, look to Call of Duty and just and like just just make just make it a side game that people can play, like not not like a game game. Yeah, yeah absolutely, I mean, I, and not like the next uh, Metal Gear game. Like oh Jesus Christ, yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think we're gonna see here pretty fast to whether or not like it depends on which direction they go. I mean, I think they've kind of signed off on their future and they're just gonna be milking things until they're dead. I think that's the thing that people think, and that, like people are like, why does it have to be this way? Why did you make this decision? Was Kojima really that much of a dick? And I think the more that we go about it, like we talked about this last time, it's like eventually it'll come out what we want. I'm starting to think that it never will. And for whatever reason, Konami's okay with that. Like, yeah, I, I don't know why. I don't know what they fucking did well, or like they can't look well, worse, <laughs> like by revealing details. Or I guess that's, you know, I don't know. They probably, may have made him eat could. dog shit or something. I don't know. Well, that's the thing is these, these Japanese companies and developers will just, disappear off the face of the planet like it's very interesting like if you, if you get into sort of like some of the lesser known japanese companies or stuff like that there's a game company I absolutely adore called quintet who made three of my all-time favorite games all on the snes uh, uh particularly illusion of gaia and like literally on their wikipedia they're like we think that quintet ended uh productions around 2002 but no one's heard from them and no one knows what happened and nobody knows where everyone is and it's like oh jeez i think there is this I think there is a thing in Japan where, like, there isn't this idea of, like, we have sold this company. It is over with. We are leaving. You know, it's a very, I think it's a more of an American idea, I'm guessing, where, like, like, this company is over and we are closing our doors, you know? To make Uh, make it, like, an announcement. Where Japan will just, like, kind of just disappear, you know, into the wind. And I think uh, Konami likes it that way, too. They're like, we're just going to make pachinko machines <laughs> even even the this. founded date it doesn't make sense because it says founded july 1987 april 1989 <laughs> like, yeah. it's like they're not sure <laughs> yeah, they, they, they don't quite know right there was an active bulletin board on the official site until march 29 2002 they're <laughs> The release date of the Game Boy Advance game RPG Magical Hotion, the counterpart of GameCube's Battle Hotion, released at Mystical Arts. In response to the angry comments from fans made impatient by the lack of news, <laughs> Quintet staff yeah. posted, As we cannot currently release any information, we will close this bulletin board. Afterward, the bulletin yeah. board was shut down. And that's it. In March of that's, that's all we ever heard from Quintet's Quintet. website was also shut down. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. Like fans got angry and they're like, "Uh, fuck you." <laughs> yeah, we'll come exactly. Come back in like fifteen exactly. years. Fans got upset and they just dipped out. They're like, "We're just gonna." Yeah, imagine three D realms. Door. People are like, "When's Duke Nukem coming out?" And they were just like, "Fuck you." Forums are closed. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel like there's sometimes like I wonder, and like part of me is like, "Oh yeah, Japanese is, uh, culture is more accepting of this." I bet they're like harsher, but like they're just like used to like dealing with this crap on different ways. Like that's my take. Right. I think there's yeah. this sort of deference idea and in, in the idea of like. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's in that sort of like scandalous storytelling idea in Japan. I never hear that many like you don't hear many Japanese developers like talking about like the business side of things. Very rarely, I feel like. Yeah, they don't. They just don't. All right. Speaking of Kojima, we move on to his trailer that was released at the Video Game Awards show, which is the newest one featuring Guillermo del Toro doing live action capture. And uh, one of the most interesting things is that he's and released Mads two. Tra- uh, oh yeah, to, don't forget Matt Mads Mikkelsen, which is actually the bigger deal, yeah. which is hilarious. Um, <laughs> I just like that these guys are friends. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just love fucking that these guys are friends, and that all these guys are like, right? just chilling and stuff. It's so. Cool. Well, I just, I'm just so, cool. so happy that it just seems like he's like, I'm gonna take all this shit I wanted to do and. Silent Hills, and I'm gonna do it over here. I literally it's like. I still yes. have Norman Reedus. I still have Guillermo del Toro. Hopefully, yes. we'll get that. Uh, the manga director, I can't remember his name. Um, but, oh, uh, he's the guy that did the tentacle stuff, right? Yeah, like he's yeah. Huge. he makes really. Interesting I know he's huge. I, I should know him offhand. I'm a terrible Animaniac cast member. Um, How dare you, Jack? <laughs> Jesus, no. I mean, he's he's like a cornerstone of of Japanese everything. Um, which I yes. think most Japanese people would take offense at, but <laughs> I, I do think it has a huge effect upon uh, the the like this like the like the in the closet culture there. So I think uh, yeah, and pseudosexual culture there. But 
Um, yeah, I, but he, I mean, I, he's a big, I he's a big fucking deal. <laughs> but yeah, I literally made that point to to one of my coworkers earlier today. Early today, Ben, I was because we were we were actually talking about this game about Death Stranding, and I was like, yeah, that's basically what Kojima did. He left Konami. He was like, well, you know what? I'm gonna take everything I've wanted to do and just make that my first game. Congratulations. Yeah. And I think Konami might be flabbergasted by the fact that the American population, specifically Sony, flew in and was like. Fuck you! Yes, you can. They were like, "Thank you. Um, <laughs> we'll take, we, we 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 will be we will be your ban. We we will you know raise your banner gladly." But anyways, the point of this news story was uh, that Death Stranding, the two trailers, if you sync them at the same time and hit play at both of them, um, they will play. And there's two events going on that seem to be entirely unrelated to one another. But at a singular moment in the trailer, Guillermo, to- por- Gil- Guillermo, I don't know why I'm, I, you know, I took Spanish. Toro, I know how to say his Toro. fucking name. Guillermo de Toro, like, has a little egg device that he plugs the things in, and as soon as he plugs in his spout to the egg device, the baby from Norman Reedus's arms disappears, and a baby inside the egg device appears in Guillermo de Toro's. So it looks like there's a suggestion yeah. that something was sucked between worlds. Or there's like death is not like an end, or they have some sort of technology to end death. Like, I mean, you know, it's it's like, not enti- it's not at all clear. But stuff going on, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Or maybe like the like the Kojima new the new Kojima logo, which is like a spacesuit. Maybe that's like the egg system that the baby had initially, and you know, like there's a skull inside of it. Maybe it's like there's like a dead person that's traveling to the other world inside of it or something along, along those lines. Yeah, it, yeah, it kind of looks like, it kind of reminds me, like the, the, the Kojima Productions uh, logo re- re- reminds me of like, a, it, look, it looks kind of like a, like a really technological-esque helmet. So the new the new uh, poster image, it's got, it's Kojima Productions and it says, I'll keep coming. <laughs> um, is that what gamers are gonna say <laughs> they're playing yeah okay i feel like coming. i feel like it's kojima going i really hope the japanese is something like very poetic like fuck you konami <laughs> and wait, and i really hope that's what it means and it's not like and wait, it's sorry. not like like what is, what is kojima's this, what, what is insanely weird sense of humor and what what, what is it what is this image you said jack <laughs> So if you look up uh, Kojima Metal Gear Solid, no, it's Kojima logo, uh-huh. and it's it's just the picture of the guy in the suit, yeah. and oh, then he's yeah, looking yeah. to the side, and it says, I'll keep coming. Yeah. And it's just, it's just like, oh, Japanese to English translations. Unless it's intentional, <laughs> which I can believe of him. Either way, you got to love it. Oh, my God. Oh, well, I think right. this could That's... be interesting to see a, uh, a blank check sort of project. You know, we don't get many of those in... Uh... Sometimes they're they're rare in gaming. Um, they're rare in most it's things, cool. but like it's I cool feel like Kojima has just been given like a yeah. so he's just like make whatever you want, you know. And I'm gonna see Kojima Unhinged, which is gonna be very interesting. Whether it's good or bad, it will be unique as fuck. <laughs> I think we all know and that's what I'm excited for. We think that's gonna slide. To be entirely honest with you, are you saying bad or are you saying good? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think I I don't think letting anyone off. I mean, my experience is letting anyone entirely off the chain of production budget is a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's like I, George it Lucas. Like you know, boundaries. some of the best things in history have been made by people, and then have been entirely fucked up by people that then did not have restrictions of budget. So I, I don't know. Like maybe it's true. Maybe it's just it's a scary thing to me more than anything. Let there be some restrictions so that way they, so so that way they can get creative within those boundaries and really like push what they're a push like what like what what they are able to do. Yeah, it's really hard to say that though because yeah, like, then I, you I have you have you literally have it's it's the dream, I guess. I don't know. It's it's the dream, but you're also it's also a dream to like to like give creative people like full rights and reserves and all that jazz so it's like it is like it's like this impossible toss-up where you're like you have no idea yeah yeah really i just think it's interesting we have two trailers we don't know like who we play how you play what kind of genre it is it's like yeah it's all sold as like weird art film stuff for right now and it's 
I guess you can assume things, but maybe he plays Mads Mikkelsen. Like, who knows? Like, it could be anything. It could be yeah, and his I don't know. burning evil eyes. Like, clearly that's what's going to happen. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, look, obviously he's probably the villain, but you never know with Kojima. He could be. Could be. It ghosts. could be. I don't know. You really don't know. Maybe it's a situation where he's trying to stop, like, Guillermo de Toro from doing awful, awful, awful things. So, you, you just oh. don't know. Also, I love how Guillermo de Toro has that has that like that classic like Konami Kojima run like of metal of like fat metal gear characters. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even calling him fat specifically. <laughs> but like I'm just saying like like when there's a fat character, they have like this super distinct waddle and he just has it. And I'm just like and, yeah, I, and at first I, I thought I literally about. thought it was like just a Kojima character and then I realized it was Guillermo de Toro and I was like, oh Kojima, you didn't have to make him waddle, dude. Yeah, you didn't like you didn't what, have to what, give him what's your that's thing? That's your friend, man. That's your friend. Like you're gonna have no friends, bro. <laughs> this is how this is how Konami left you. Maybe maybe, maybe Del Toro was like, was like all for it. maybe Del Toro was like all for it because you know he was like, yeah, dude, let's do this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he was. Maybe, 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 I have no maybe, doubt. Maybe I have no him. doubt. Guillermo del Toro seems like a guy that would have and like, you know, unlike me, would have like really, really good, like, uh, you know, a really good sense of humor about his weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on, guys. Just going to hit the half main mark. Um, and now I'm just talking about uh, what shooters to buy this holiday season. Now, we looked at this kind of the shooters this year, and I know, uh, let's just go through. Like, I've played Doom, I played Overwatch, I played Battlefield 1, I played Call of Duty Infinity War, and I played Titanfall 2. And I know, Ben, you've played Doom. You've played a little bit of Overwatch, right? Yeah, I've played Doom, I've played some Overwatch, mostly at friends' houses, and I've right, played. Right. Uh, the main campaign of infinite war oh you have that's good because i haven't touched yeah. i haven't touched that what did you what did you feel about the campaign of infinite war if, if you don't mind me asking it's actually okay yeah um i think john snow is a, not great it has no, the same problem as uh he's not good um but it's actually kind of a decent five hour thing i would say if you want just a decent solid good third person shooter story like I would pick it up and rent it because I just I, I got it from Redbox, finished it in like two days and oh, cool. six bucks later, you know. Was, yeah. Got it all the way through. And uh, I think it's definitely worth a rental lease for that. I haven't played any of the multiplayer because I don't have uh, yeah. Xbox Live anymore. So, so <laughs> I just don't. I, I know. I, I but feel uh, like it's, I have it's a, a solid, uh, interesting space shooter that would have been better received if it wasn't called Call of Duty. Like, <laughs> I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, I mean, you, like, you can look at the initial reaction that people had when, like, when it was first announced this earlier this year and, and taken, like, say that it's like mm. yeah yeah it's well, I, I think like specifically with like this it has to do entirely with, i mean you've said it it's like it has to do entirely with fan backlash against call of duty which i don't even think it did because it's still holding on to its top tier i mean it's lower than ever before but at the same time still the majority of people buy call of duty because of the name and the associations yeah. which is weird because it i think it's going to continue to get critically panned because of the name but i think it'll also continue to sell well because of the name which um like that that multiplayer <laughs> experience yeah, which is yeah, weird. Yeah, but I mean, it, it does say something that they had to bundle Modern Warfare Remastered with it, and you can't buy Remastered without buying that game. Which is a and big fucking that's... finger to fans yeah. a little bit. Oh, absolutely. That that, that just screams that like we bad. were not confident in this at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which does make sense to me because the game is good. I mean... Yeah, it. I think the game is good, and I think the multiplayer is more of the same. And I think that's the thing that's scary to them is like, is kids that buying old versions of the game. Like, let's be honest, if they had released Modern Warfare Remastered at the same time, everyone would have bought that. Oh, like I'd be totally playing that right now. Doubt. Oh yeah, I'd be. I, we'd be yeah. on there, and we would be having a fucking great time. Like yeah, like, and it's I, a I, really good remaster. They did yeah. a yeah. fucking good job. Yeah, like I, I think, God, I think God. for each of us, like, like, like all they could have sold that for sixty that, bucks. Like, that would have been a game included. And like, what game are you playing? Well, I'm also playing remastered Call of like, like Modern Warfare. Like, it would have been a given. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that's kind of a shitty sign for the Call of Duty franchise because, like, you know, it's it's kind of like like not selling it separately is bad. And I think that's the thing is like bringing in the hardcore fan base and trying to keep them there through kind of shitty tactics like that 
Um, I think that's kind of awful. And even though, like, there's nothing wrong with this game, I think that's the issue is that they know that there's games that have stepped out in front of them. And chief among them that won the Game Awards this year was Overwatch. Very and I think much. that's because they're doing entirely different things. I'm not even totally comfortable recommending one or the other against each other because the gameplay and moment-to-moment yeah. action and everything is so different. Vastly. Yeah. I, I mean, the I, thing I, is, I like, think... I think what it would come down to, for for me and maybe everyone else, is do you, do you pick the game that you know is going to be around the longest, or you pick the game that you want to get now while it's hot before everyone abandons it? You know, because I right. feel like Overwatch, knowing, um, knowing Blizzard's history, knowing how good they are at keeping fans, they have some of the best retention rates of any sort of. Uh, wow, was still going somehow <laughs> after all yeah. these years, you know. Uh, and I feel like they will always come with good ways to change up the gameplay. So I feel like the servers are probably going to last the longest of any of the shooters out this year. But then it's like Titanfall's multiplayer here is so good that you kind of want to play it now before the servers are all empty. Yeah, which which is a scary thing because I think Titanfall is, to my mind, and I'm just thinking real quick here, to my mind, Titanfall has the strongest campaign of anything out this year. Mm, Doom is a tough contender. I would argue that Titanfall is stronger play, because it. I can see it. It's 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 a close thing, and Titanfall Two has a very competent multiplayer shooter, whereas Doom has a terrible multiplayer element. <laughs> because the Doom multiplayer element was made by an entirely different studio, which kind of precludes it from a suggestion for me, other than getting it. Which is sad because, like, if we're talking about it, and I'm saying, like, what what do you buy for a kind of a Christmas Day multiplayer game where you want a multiplayer? Like, let's say, let's say, what do we recommend to people? Let's we'll say you want a multiplayer and you want a robust uh, single player experience. You're not going to get that in Overwatch, nope. and you're not going to get that in Doom. It's just on different acts of the perspective. Now, Overwatch is going to continue to be big, and it's going to be this new competitive scene, and all of this is going to be happening, and it's the biggest game out there, and it has the most moment-to-moment gameplay in terms of that. But let's say you're Sally Joe whatever, and you want to get a single-player game. I mean, I'm Doom or Titanfall, one of the two. Probably I don't know who do. Sally Joe No Internet is, but they're a fun character to talk about. <laughs> I like Sally Joe, no internet. She's, uh, they are yeah. actually kind of like a nice yeah. gender neutral person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sally Joe, Sally Joe, no internet. I like that. We're going to, there, and I think that the point of this individual is just that, like, let's say we got somebody that's this, they're going to, they're literally looking at these things. Like, Call of Duty is five hours. Like, it's got an insanely robust multiplayer, but there's no reason you're going to get no internet and you're not going to play multiplayer with that. Battlefield 1, same deal. Like, you know, Battlefield, Overwatch, and Call of Duty, then if you're going to talk about single player shooters, it's Titanfall 2 or doom and that's the thing is like you know that's a real toss-up to me because both have great experiences yeah. i would argue that titanfall 2 is shorter but stronger all the way through doom has a very has a much steeper difficulty curve yeah and if that's like said doom might titanfall be... 2 for me has more i haven't played it though with, I, but has more in common with uh, portal 2 than it does for me in terms of actual shooters so it's like a weird combination of the two and it has a lot of traversal like a lot of traversal and that's like a, the hilarious thing no, that's about the it. One thing is go ahead. It's like an action platforming game. It's, it's yes. more so than an actual shooter. Yeah, that's one thing I'm very impressed with watching like YouTube videos and things like that of, of Titanfall 2. It's like the acrobatics that some people can pull off are just crazy. And it's like, oh, look yeah. how fluid the game lets you be if you're really, really good at it. And that's the thing I will say about Doom is Doom is fun, but it's it's old school shooter in that sense where you're kind of locked down. You can jump a little bit, but... Uh, you ain't gonna be swinging around the maps like crazy, you know, and you're, yeah, you're just kind of limited in your movements and, and your up and quick fire stuff, and levels. it's it gets more classic. But Titanfall is like it's it's a new kind of shooting style where it's like half Spider Man game, half like uh, if, a shooter in a way. Like if Spider Man had a gun and, and, also, and, and also and also got an Iron Man suit, that's basic. That's kind of Titanfall, right? <laughs> it's like you and get it's, three it's a little bit, interesting options. In it's not Titanfall. unfair. And, and, and honestly, when I say it out loud, that sounds amazing. It, and it is, it is <laughs> a fun experience. It is, it is kind of, and especially like, I'll say this. One of my favorite things about Titanfall is when someone is better than you, you know it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, like, sometimes like the, the difference... The difference between like, uh, like in Call of Duty, like the difference between somebody that's really, really good and you can seem 
you know, somewhat a touch marginal, which isn't true, but like it feels that way because this guy just has like quicker up on you or whatever. But but then what happens is like in this game, it's like somebody like runs around a corner you know flags back and cuts you off and then jumps over the thing and shoots you in the face and you're like holy fuck (laughs) that man just ran a parkour course to kill me (laughs) like like good on you (laughs) like it's not i don't know i do feel like i love that thing and i love like i love the combat because it it stacks the mechs in such a way and the the mechs are so much better this time it's not just you know rock paper scissors and which it never was rock paper scissors gameplay to be honest but it it definitely felt like here's the mech with a lot of hit points it's slow here's the fast mech with low hit points here's the medium hit points like there's nothing interesting about that inherent gameplay but now like they've taken it and they've added all these this like subtextual stuff that's going on that really helps the scenario really helps the situation and really like makes the mech gameplay faster on top of having pilot gameplay go at an insane pace which is nice because you did like the gameplay has this ebb and flow because you pop into a mech you're inherently slower except you're fighting in a very very different kind of like tactical sense as opposed to once you get out of the cockpit you're like breakneck speed it's like just like the insane it's like call of duty and like all fucking angles and directions and things and i think like it's a really exhilarating combat system and that's why i've always said titanfall 2 is my favorite game of this year i mean not favorite shooter of this year um more because it's an action platformer and that's just always going to inherently be the thing i like the most but at the same time as a recommendation i can't because the Surfers are fucking dead. Mm. Like they're just dead and they're going to continue to die. And if, I guess my bit is like, if you want to have the, like, you know, in terms of the monetary gain of it, if you want to, if you want to pick up Titanfall two and have that great experience, you need to get it now and play it. Cause it's going to go away yeah. faster than any of these other games. Yeah. I mean, like you look at, you look right, at like how, kind of at the same how, place. how quickly the drop in price was from when it was released to what it is now and how, and how quickly they put out a trailer. Like, like we were talking that like, I, and I know, I know um, the, the, th- the three of us were talking, we're talking about it between ourselves, like two, three weeks ago, that the, the, tra- the trailer, like where, where they literally used the song by Jay-Z, like, 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 do you want to, like, do you want to encore? Do you want more? And it's like, it was like them trying to say, we have a good game, go get it. It's it has good scores. Look at all of these good scores. Why are you not playing this? Yeah, I think, and I think that it makes very much sense why it's playing it because it didn't get the advertising campaign. It, they it, put it, it out really to die did. with one of the best known shooters in the series, and they just uh, uh, they've made a really uh, terrible uh, uh, decision here and uh i don't think that they're going to correct it or give anything and i think respawn's gonna get die and i think they're gonna fucking pick over the talent and try to fold it into the battlefield system to fold some of that element in there so that when they eventually make a battlefield non-modern non-modern future warfare or whatever because this will come around again and it's their battlefield flagship title They'll fold some of that uh, Titans Fall uh, respawn stuff, and they'll probably add in mechs, and it'll be Battlefield Future or something. Um, that's probably the game plan. They're just trying to let it pick at mm-hmm. Call of Duty while Battlefield goes for the knockout blow. Right. Which is probably uh, why, because you notice that they picked up these things. Both games went to thirty dollars within a couple days. Within a couple, or had thirty dollars sales within a couple days of coming out, and they pushed them so hard just to get people to pick them up. I feel like just so people aren't picking up Battlefield. I mean, Call of Duty. I feel like EA had a game planned, and Titanfall Two was its sacrificial, and re- and Respawn, I think, to that extent, is its sacrificial lamb. Oof, that's harsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's just like, 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 you you like now that I'm there. following you, and like now I'm following it, and like and like thinking under my head, it's like. Goodness gracious! How dare you, EA? Yeah, I know. I, I I do think I do think that's probably what the. I mean that I think that's my, that's me wearing my paranoid ten hat a little bit because, like, is that pro? I can't imagine somebody just doing that. But at the same time, I can't imagine what the actual game plan past that is. Like, I can't imagine somebody intentionally doing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. I don't understand. I, I just don't understand how it could be anything else. Yeah. Well, I, I think I have to agree with you there. I just, uh, I don't see how they ever, why they would release a game one week later. That's <laughs> another AAA shooter right after your other giant AAA shooter comes out. Yeah. It doesn't really seem to me much sense otherwise. And not push it 
back to like February or something like that, where it's a little more open. Yeah, just get it murdered in February. Yeah, don't don't that like don't release your game where, where don't release a game where it's only like the second one in the series at the same time as as two juggernauts that are releasing like their 18th basically games in their series like that are super established that's just all right dumb. yeah i mean that aside what peter if you were going to buy one of these five shooters that i've listed out here for like let's say you got enough money to get one of them right what are you going to get what are you going to pick up probably gonna pick overwatch because be, probably be, because, yeah. because like because i have had a chance to like I've had a chance to kind of play it at at, at different friends, at different friends, play different friends. I can't talk different friends places, and and even and even though like you know with any of these games, I suck at shooters. It 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 just it just seems like a game that that would be like fun to pick up because I mean I'm because like because like while with like with each with each of these games like for stuff that I've seen like it's awesome. I don't know. I I, I get I guess. Like with some of the games that I've been playing lately, I want I want super bright and colorful, <laughs> but 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 also but also be, but also because I because I like I like how quickly things can change in a game and like in like and like the moments that can, that can be made in like in each round for whatever mode you're playing. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I think that that's uh, I think Overwatch is the touchstone of this year. It is the most innovative gameplay. Um, I like it. I think I still had. If, I mean, Titanfall and Overwatch for me, because Titanfall 2's single-player campaign was probably some of the most fun video gaming I've had this year, easily. Um, and not just because I'm a Portal 2 fanatic. Well, yes, I think just because I'm a Portal 2 fanatic, that's exactly what it is. But yeah, I lie. think still, still to the point, I think it's definitely like... I think it's definitely worth looking out for, and I think it's definitely picking up even if it does, even if the servers do collapse because it's a great multiplayer game. I think it's the most bang for your buck, um, knowing full well that I think mid February, mid January, there might not be a multiplayer uh, functional functioning in this game. I think that's just the reality. But it's gonna kick ass over December. I tell you that. And honestly, considering like the point that we're at in December and with you saying like mid January, mid mid January, mid February, it's like that is literally around the corner. Like that's not far at all. It's not, it's not very far. And I think that's the thing is like, I might like overwatch gives you an infinite amount of gameplay and that's a hard comparison to like the, like maybe the six, seven hours of gameplay in the, in the campaign for uh, Titanfall too. So it's, it's, I think I have to say overwatch as well. Ben, uh, it's tough. I mean, I guess if you want to cheat my answer, you could probably, if you look smart enough and wait for sales, you can probably get Doom and Titanfall. Right. At the same price you get, like, Overwatch. So This is true. There's always that option if you can manage it. But uh, if I had to pick one, which is the point of this, I would have to say, ooh, boy, it's tough. See, Doom was great, but it was very much scratching itch. I needed scratching, which was a very classic... Uh, not like Half Life, but it's similar in Half Life where you don't need cover and just kind of run and gun and have fun and yeah, shoot not, things. Nothing uh, wrong with that either. And yeah, but I'm just trying to say it's like a different game than Half Life. No, oh yeah, I mean, no, I totally it's get sort that. Sort of that same. It's like the same, like deep down, basic ingredient. Was what I'm saying versus like you know, it's like the same. No, definitely bread agreed. Have flour in it, you know what I mean? And so it's like the same yeah. kind of thing. And uh, so as much as I did like Doom, I think maybe it's just more of a personal thing. So I'd probably yeah, I'd probably say Overwatch. I mean, it's just going to be the game that Jesus. you're going to yeah. probably get the most it's out hard, of. It's know, hard to, like. it's, it's easy to understand why that game is the number one game of the year and the game awards and why it is because in terms of innovation as well as being a good game, there isn't a really comparison, nor is there any other studio with quite like the – you know, quite with like the uh, the pedigree that Blizzard brings to the table, so it's it's really it's really hard to suggest anything can beat Overwatch. And I, I think, think, and I think Overwatch, right? Also, and 
I, I, I think Overwatch also succeeds, also succeeds in in being in being a game that like that you know even if you're someone like me you know who, like who's like, who sucks at shooters and like and, and you know like whenever I play whenever I kind of whenever you play those kinds of games like you know your aim isn't exactly that good there are still characters available for you to for you to have like Farah where it's like you're just shooting a rocket and 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 and, and if some and if like you know an enemy is just it's just in the vicinity of the explosions that you like it's like, they still get hit so you know that you still have that you still have varying points of entry into the game yeah all right for save point gamecast this has been peter dancy ben no peter dancy no, peter's you... first sorry <laughs> I, I, you were first, then, so now it's Peter's la- out last. I don't, I don't know. This right. is not. I don't. I don't have a plan. I'm just kind of depressed by Titanfall Two. If you guys didn't notice, <laughs> I want to give a ringing Keep endorsement here. Out. But it's uh, yeah. This is this is Jack at the end of the cast. I always I start off oh I'm all happy and save point, and then I think about video games for a while, and I'm like oh god. Wait, never mind. I'm sorry. Let me just. It's leave. like you know, Dark Souls will never be as good as it was in Dark Souls One. Titanfall shooters can't be the way they were in the old days. I'm an old hand. Everything's terrible. Blah 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 blah. No, life is good. We got Final Fantasy 15. That's gonna solve all your problems. <laughs> and if you have an issue, you just like, go uh... listen to that fishing track because that is that is what it is like to touch the face of God or what I don't know the background soundtrack would sound like if you touch the face of God. I would have so. to wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> like, like, I, 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 like I'm yeah. fairly certain that like that when I get the soundtrack, not if but when, like that will be one of my favorite tracks on the entire thing fishing yeah <laughs> easily as well for save point gamecast this has been ben haworth thanks for coming on ben no problem all right i have been your host this time jack newman if you want to listen to more from the tuscan shed media network head on over to tuscanshed.com you can check out there you can check out our flagship podcast the movie gang podcast as well as Animania and Geek Space Nine. Head on over to Patreon.com and go check out and send us a couple bucks up there. And if you want to head on over and click on some of our ads on our website, you can and make us some money. So we would really appreciate that. So go check on that. And then head on over to Facebook, Twitter, whatever your poison, Tumblr if you really must. And then shoot us some likes, send us some love, and then head on over to iTunes and rate and subscribe to us there. We would really appreciate all the love that you could send our way. I know it seems like a lot to do it, but we would really appreciate it. It really honestly helps us and keeps us going. So thank you everyone for listening and have a very happy holiday from the cast of Save Point Game.